want to get a show. Prime Fool, Zelda, let's go. FC Evo, Wave Race. Ooh, what's this? Fighting in order to live. And living to fight. Yo, is this Zelda Blade or something? That's Yo, don't even play world. around. Yo, don't even play around, bro. Ionios. Yo, this is Zelda Blade 3! Tell me! Oh my god. What possess you to side with them? Yo, We're Dan. Holy I'm shit. To believe you're him. I knew it. I saw this coming. You are. You're not enemies now. Fine for you, isn't it? All that. Time Yo, let's got. fucking you can try. go. Try to move forward together. Those things look like the Mechonis as well. They're not your friends anymore. The Mechon. Yo, this looks. Oh my god, yo! Oh my god, this engine. This looks like. This looks like Zelda Chronicles X as well. Yo, this is. Oh, yo. Let's fucking go. Yo, is this. I don't know if it's Zelda 3 or X2, dude. No, it's gotta be Zelda Blade. Oh, I don't know. Shut up, mate. Shut up, mate. <laughs> No, nah, it's gotta be that. That's a telephia, you say. Um, that, not a telephia. Fucking okay, right, man. Yeah, this is Zelda Blade Three. They're, they're, it's like a, t yeah. Not... Got a giant sword there. That's the that's the um Mechonis's sword there, and that's the old Bionis. It's gotta be. Yeah, let's fucking go. Let's fucking go. Oh my god. That looks perfect. But this is a 2022 video stream, so yo, it's, oh, there you it's go. Come out. Ooh, ah! Yo, let's fuck. Yo, let's go. Okay. Okay. Hey, what's going on everyone? So, between the PlayStation 4 and the Nintendo Switch, the, the only two modern consoles I currently own, um, this has without a doubt been one of the most trying generations you know, ever for me when it comes to gaming hardware. At, at one point I found it nearly unbearable to play my PlayStation 4 due to the incredible sound the fan made when it really started to ramp up. You know, most times I could honestly not hear the games I was playing. This was a problem for me because I, I couldn't have the TV too loud um, in the evenings, which is the, the only time I can really game. Um, you know, seriously, you know, as otherwise I'd wake up um, the kids uh, sleeping upstairs. And being a parent, you know, put, putting your headphones on to block out the world, you know, just unfortunately it isn't something I I can be completely relaxed with. I've now become accustomed to taking the PlayStation 4 apart in order to maintain its fan, um, in order to keep it as quiet as possible, something which has, you know, helped a little for sure. And, you know, this is never mind, you know, that the PlayStation 4 controller's dire battery life, you know, something which still plagues me to this day, as gaming in my house has now attracted the attention of my, my kids who are getting older by the day and use these devices, you know, more than I do. Um, each evening, you know, I might be lucky if I turn on the PlayStation 4 and, and one of the two controllers is charged. Um, then you have the Nintendo Switch. You know, what a roller coaster of a journey you know myself and many have had with this machine um back in 2017 my, my hype for the next Nintendo, Nintendo console was as high as ever um, the hardware was revealed it looked utterly incredible and new and and leading a charge or, or resurrection from the commercial failure you know yet ultimately fantastic nintendo wii u um, leading the charge was the legend of zelda breath of the wild a, a cross-gen open air zelda which looked to change not just the ip but the, um, the gaming world and it achieved that and then some um, we, we knew Nintendo had to get back on their feet after the wii u and outside of zelda it might have started slow software wise but it still had Zelda, and that carried us through until the newer Switch games began to drop. You know, the likes of Super Mario, Godyssey, uh, Splatoon 2, uh, Arms, Zelda Blade Chronicles 2, uh, Mario Rabbit's Kingdom Battle, uh, Fire Emblem Warriors, and, and a wealth of great indie games which boosted the Switch's first year into what is now legendary status. You know, things were looking good 
but but even in the first year as a previous Wii U um, owner who, who played and saw the best of not only what the machine offered but also what Nintendo could offer um, when talking hardware innovation and services and we began to see some things that you know concerned us about the Switch. You know, many of us accepted Mario Kart 8 Deluxe as almost a way to get the Switch boosted from the start. You know, something Nintendo you know, obviously desperately needed. You know, Mario Kart is, is always a surefire success. And Deluxe came with many things which weren't on the Wii U version. But as we know, that was on the last of the Wii U's ports and they swiftly began to flood to the Nintendo Switch with many of those long-standing IPs seemingly not having a new Switch version in the works because of these ports which is, as of this video, still the case when it comes to things like a new 2D Mario, a new Donkey Kong, uh, a more recent Captain Toad, and, and a new Pikmin, just to name a few. The horrors of all these high-priced re-releases were hitting us Wii U fans hard, and we wanted new Switch experiences. Then, um, at the start, and even continuing to this day, in many ways, Nintendo's online offerings were stripped down almost entirely from what the Wii U offered with its online services. You know, Miiverse, a, a truly revolutionary and amazing feature system, was no more. You know, once a free community-based and communication tool, now replaced with nothing but what eventually became a no longer free but subscription-based service with seemingly little to offer outside of just playing games online. The somewhat saving grace of this subscription service price was that it was cheap and eventually Nintendo started rolling out a fractured yet growing offering of NES and SNES games over the years along with some more unique games like Mario 99, Pac-Man 99 etc. All of which were great but as we know some being for only for limited times. Um, as you know, as an as an offering for our, our subscription price, you know, a continued annoyance, I suppose, even to this day. We had to come to deal with the smartphone app, which overall has done the job in terms of connecting you to voice chat when pairing up with your system in order to talk to your friends online. But this still has its issues, as there is no fundamental way to contact friends on your Switch or through the app unless you see them actually online and can send them a game invite through the system. You know, something which remains nowhere near as efficient or streamlined as it could be for, for most people. Then we've had the problem with third parties initially supporting the, um, the system, something that has effectively taken them years to finally catch, catch up on. As at the start, many were hesitant after the commercial failures of the Wii U and they barely had anything in development for Nintendo's new system outside of games where Nintendo themselves had either partnered with them to create exclusive titles or publish something in order to get it onto their system. Third party games were fractured in release or, or broken in terms of their ports to the system, either based off the system's capabilities or the developers not putting that much effort into many of the ports due to other reasons. You know, some Nintendo's fault, many others are developers' fault. Then there are the issues with the Nintendo hardware itself. From a personal point of view, you know, I've had every single Joy-Con break on me in some way, shape or form, either from the now infamous Joy-Con drift, something which Nintendo hasn't handled well, but have seemingly managed to escape the bullet on, or, or problems with the Switch hardware itself, where due to the compact nature of the machine and its dock, um, I've had the screen get scratched as, as it slides in and out of the dock, because the dock, the original one, isn't, isn't as perfect as it should be, um, but luckily most of the damage has been on the screen protectors I sensibly bought for the system. I've had the vents crack on top as well as the case and the console warp and bend somewhat you know, due to the heat of the system. Um, I've actually had to send my Switch off to Nintendo to have it fixed due to it overheating, um, which actually led to the machine itself being fully replaced in the end as my day one model was done in completely and because this was out of warranty this, this cost me um, extra money and this was only I think this was only about three years in or something and this has led to other issues due to Nintendo's handling of their online as often sometimes mind-boggling attempts to save data across systems um, and, and, and also save just single game data. I, I nearly lost my entire Animal Crossing island thanks to this and I completely lost my Splatoon 2 saves, you know, forcing me to start again, which has led me to somewhat hate the game. Um, but other little annoying things have happened where all my game times didn't transfer over, you know, seemingly linked to the system and, and not your Nintendo online account. And as we know, not all games support cloud saves, so I've lost more save files. And my daughter lost all her save files because she didn't have an online account at the time. You know, 
throw in a raft of other annoying things that Nintendo have done different during the Switch's lifetime. And for me, this has been you know, by far the most frustrating and annoying Nintendo generation I've, I've ever had. You know, something I've, I've covered somewhat on my channel and certainly discussed many times with, with other people. But through all this turmoil, through all these moments where as a longtime Nintendo fan and previous Wii U owner, um, I've had to watch and listen to narratives change from supposed gamers and Nintendo fans, from the media, as always, choose a narrative that best suits those desired clicks, to seeing a level of inconsistency that has ballooned since we've had the horror and privilege of being somewhat constantly on social media in these gaming circles. Um, a level of inconsistency on, on gaming takes and opinions that certainly frustrates me to no end, especially when it comes to the Nintendo circle of the gaming space. You know, through all this, the Nintendo Switch has slowly been achieving one thing, the main thing that gaming should be all about, and that's the games. O over the last year, I've, I've noticed me dialing back on my Nintendo Switch um, inconsistency hatred. You know, like, like my PS4, I've been fixing and servicing this console myself, buying new analog sticks for my Joy-Cons, and ensuring that I back up everything I can in case of another situation where something breaks. You know, just fixing Joy-Con drift alone has brought back my original enjoyment and relaxation I had with the system at launch. You know, it's, it's, it's quite funny how having a working controller and console can make all the difference in the world, right? I've had to come to terms with the great Nintendo Online reset that the Switch brought and um, I am now enjoying its online offerings for what they are and in my mind hope that this is the last great Nintendo Online reset and Nintendo's new online structure can roll over to their following systems with little issues. You know, I've accepted the Switch for what it is, uh, a somewhat bare bones gaming system with a fractured, slow, yet functioning online system. But ultimately, its, its greatest success has been its growing software library over the last few years. There's just no two ways about it. That the Switch, from a first party point of view, for me, has many of the greatest Nintendo games ever made. It's just it's as simple as that. You, you just simply can't ignore how great the likes of Breath of the Wild, Super Mario Odyssey, uh, Zelda Blade Chronicles 2, Metroid Dread, Luigi's Mansion 3, Super Smash Bros. Ultimate, Animal Crossing New Horizons, and Splatoon 2 are as examples. You know, I, I consider most of these easily the best entries in their series, Sim just simply no contest. Never mind the releases of games like Paper Mario and the Origami King, Hyrule Warriors, Age of Calamity, Fire Emblem, Three Houses, Astral Chain, Ring Fit Adventure, Nintendo Labo, Mario Party Superstars, um, The Legend of Zelda, Link's Awakening Remake, uh, Mario Rabbids Kingdom Battle, and, and even the more recent Pokemon Legends, which you know, for those who have bought it, are held in it as the open world Pokemon game they've been waiting for. Although I'm still a bit uh, uh, more skeptical on that one, <laughs> you know. But still, it's it's uh, it's happened, right? And it's a unique Switch game, and and we're happy to have it. Then, more importantly, from Nintendo, we've seen a revival of many IPs which we haven't seen in some time. A new Mario Golf with uh, Mario Golf Super Rush, a, a Big Brain Academy, a, a new WarioWare a new Pokemon Snap, which I absolutely love. And as we now look forwards, um, Advance Wars is seeing the light of day again, even if it is a remake. We're finally getting uh, that full 3D Kirby game we've been asking for, with me asking for it since the Nintendo 64. Um, the Switch is finally getting its own unique Zelda with the follow-up to Breath of the Wild. We're getting Bayonetta 3, where the uh, released trailer just, just put nothing but a smile on my face. We get Metro Prime 4, which still blows my mind. Xenoblade Chronicles 3, which as you saw from my um, reaction, I, I simply cannot wait for. Um, as well as the return of the Wii Sports series, which even now my, my brain can't compute, you know, for, for whatever reason, you know, which, which man, it's, it's nothing but fantastic to see these names again. And, you know, I hope that Samurai um, running sword game from uh, Wii Sports Resort returns. But outside of Nintendo's offerings, my, my initial frustrations and worries about original third-party games on the system 
have been slowly put to rest. I've I've been begging and waiting for both that console and handheld Nintendo and third party to come together. You know, from just like we had between the, the Wii U and the 3DS to finally come together and finally hit this machine. And, and we've been seeing this ramp up incredibly over the last few years. Um, the Monster Hunter series uh, is, is, is here. The Square RPGs like the Bravely series as, as well as the new 2D HD offerings like Octopath and the Dragon Quest remakes and Triangle Strategy which I can't wait for. But also new stuff like I Am Setsuna, Onanaki, Lost Sphere, um, Neo, The World Ends With You um, has returned that series. And most recently the revival of classics like the, the Mana series, A Saga Frontier. And the Front Mission remix, you know, which I, I didn't play the original first two. I start with Front Mission three, so the series actually remade properly. Oh, you know, that, that's great. And then we got the recent, you know, Live Alive, which I, you know, for, for myself, surprisingly, have no recollection of ever hearing of. You know, man, you know, just it's that just that just looks great. But it's it's also great to see these old IPs that were once Japan exclusive come over to the west and had themselves remade as well you know that the switch has become an rpg beast with most of the greats on, on on the system i could name a wealth of new indie games and other third party games you know but to, to bring this video to to a close you know over over the last few years the switch has finally become a system with a large library of unique games that it can call its own you know creating its own unique feel something which every console and its library should have you know this this direct continue to show that nintendo and its key third parties are now determined to keep pushing this machine in all directions with unique and exciting gaming experiences and as of now for me the system software positives greatly outweigh its systems negatives and other factors you know which some continue to linger but also some continue to be addressed you know, I'm I'm actually now a Nintendo Switch Expansion Pass owner, which gives me access to the Sega Mega Drive and N64 games, along with the Animal Crossing DLC, all of which I've been playing for a fair bit. Would I have initially paid for this as a lone user? Um, no, probably not. But thanks to the Family Pass feature, something which I've had from the start, um, I could spread the cost of this service over multiple people. And what I ended up paying, I consider to be worth the value for this Nintendo Switch Online expansion, or just just the Nintendo Switch Online in general. You know, now with the recent reveal of Mario Kart 8 Booster Pack, you know, this value grows in regards to value. I was a while back saying how I missed this level of value from Nintendo when, you know, when they done and had previously offered Mario Kart DLC at a fantastic price and and quality. You know, I'm happy to see this return. You know, even if it has taken this amount of time you know it's, it's let me know that the old nintendo is still there in 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 some areas and you know so, sometimes these things could take so long and so many things can happen before that you doubt you know that that you might see these games again but that, that that's been a switch generation for me it's been so many ups and downs and and roller coasters your know, doubts set in in so many areas that you know you, you need to stop you need to wait sometimes this amount of time to actually see something you know positive um you know but by the time this system is done i feel that it'll have one of if not the greatest libraries of games and unique exclusive games to ever grace a nintendo system you know i i, I can't i just can't see how anyone could deny that now you know even even myself the nintendo switch for games is is once again becoming as well as you know, become in many areas a dream come true system when it comes to software. You know, I've, I've done videos in the past where, where I said the system could see the return of Nintendo IPs, you know, we once thought to be dead. And after this Direct, that, that excitement has returned, you know, somewhat again. And games like F-Zero, uh, Wave Race, Pilot Wings are once again possible in my mind because we've continued to see the once thought impossible from both Nintendo and third parties in regards to older IPs return to the system and that's just that's just everything we we want as gamers you know so yeah you know the, the, the switch is still on a crazy road of frustration and confusion at times but ultimately the games are winning out and you know what a library of games we're seeing and this this direct you know it 
when when I was watching it, um, you know, there there were moments where I was I was mute or you know did, didn't think uh, it was that you know exciting and stuff. Um, but then I watched back, you know, I listened back to some of my reactions to to some of the the, the reveals and stuff, and you know, it's just you know it was it was it was it was it was, it was a you know a, a good to, to to great direct. Some some would call it the best. Um, you know that that that's fine. I can understand that. It's up to them. But just just overall, it was just it was just it was just great. It was just refreshing, um, and it was, just, it, was just, it was just so good to see. I mean, the fact that we're getting you know these types of remakes like Live Alive, like I said, which I'd never heard of. It was a PS, PS1 RPG. I'd never heard of, and I've played a lot of PS1 RPGs. But the fact that something like this is being remade, it just it just means anything is possible now. You know, we we could be essentially entering a, a golden era of just revivals you know just just great revivals of of games and you know what you know what what more could we ask for you know what more could we ask for so you know what, what are your thoughts on the recent director uh, you know, or, or just the current status of, of the nintendo switch itself as always thanks for watching and i'll reply to every single comment as always take care all and peace